a puzzle on eight blocks movement so here is the respective puzzle description a player is supposed to slide tiles into new positions in order to realign a scrambled puzzle back into a goal alignment so this is our goal alignment here so we are supposed to arrange these eight tiles in such a way that we require to have this goal arrangement where the center point will be the will be known as the empty spot or es so it will be known as empty spot or es we shall have to develop one procedure dfs which finds required moves to reach to the goal node without any repetition and this dfs will have three arguments so here we are having the first argument and the second argument and this is the variable that is a path so in this way this dfs this very procedure will get executed i think for the better understanding let us go for one demonstration where we shall discuss regarding this problem we shall run it and outputs will be obtained accordingly so demonstration is for you in this prolog program we have implemented the 15 puzzle problem and its respective solution so we know that here we will be having 15 blocks and one empty spot so our goal arrangement of our board will be something like this we are expecting that the empty spot will be at the middle and then other blocks will have the positions like this now what are the feasible possible movements are there if the empty spot is in the top row then either it can be at the middle place or it can be at this particular place because at the first place the empty spot cannot be because in that case the left movement is not possible so that's why we are going for a board position this that is the source board position and this is our goal or target board position so in this way we are going for movement of the empty spot left in the top row in this way we have done it so we have considered two cases when the empty spot will be at the middle of the top row or at the right of the top row so move empty spot left in the middle row in the case empty spot can be at the middle of the middle row or at the right of the middle row and in this way the board positions can have the uh, change can have the next board position target board position when the empty spot will move towards the left in the middle row so that's why left in the bottom row right in the right movement in the top row right movement in the middle row right movement in the bottom row in this way we have considered all the possible moves of the empty spot so here you can find that all the possible moves we have done the respective lists accordingly now let me go for the solution so at first we are going for dfs simplest so in this case what is happening you see this is our source board position or the source list and it will be the target list the same list will be the target if the list is matching with the goal list otherwise s s will be found as a head and rest how to form this rest that is a tail part of this list that is move s to s2 and dfs s2 from there will be forming this rest so dfs simplest has been called here recursively so in this way dfs simplest is working that means it will move it will just make the board, current board position as a first argument and all the board position intermediate while going to get our goal board position in the second list okay now let me execute one query on this dfs simplest so here is a query we are going to execute this one so here we have already compiled our program and the program is ready and it is existing in the memory so we are executing one code here so this is a query and we are want to execute the query here so here you see it is producing we are getting this answer that is 12305678 that means it was in the first uh, in the first column of the middle row the empty spot was there and it has reached to the goal node accordingly okay so my dfs simplest is working fine but the main difficulty in the dfs simplest is that it hasn't kept any trace that the target board position is already traversed or not 
You see, if there is a cycle, if the target port position is already traversed by this algorithm earlier, by the other instances earlier, then it will form a looping. It cannot give us the ultimate result because each and every time it will reach to a target state of the board which has been traversed already. So as a result of that, if you go for a complicated board position like this, here this empty spot is at the bottom. Then in that case, if I execute this query here, you can find that it is not giving us the answer because it will form an infinite loop and you can find that this GNU prolog this has stopped working yet. So it has stopped working. So if I close this one, so my this window is getting closed. So that's why we are going for another version of this DFS simplex. So here it has been labeled as DFS. So here we are doing the same thing, but one thing we are doing, that means whatever the board positions, the least structure we have covered, we have traversed already in our uh, board arrangements, we are keeping that one in a trace in a respective list that is known as a chat and if this target board position is not a member so it denotes not is not a member of this checked list then we shall go for this DFS S2 and this S2 is also getting prepended to the checked list so it will prohibit uh, our board positions to come which has been traversed earlier so now if I execute this query on this so here also the program has been compiled and it is found okay. So I'm getting this answer perfectly okay. And here also if I just write here length of this path and I'm keeping this one in N. So it is giving me that how many transitions I had to make to reach to my goal node. So it is telling that only one transition we are, uh, we are requiring. So that's why this DFS is better than the DFS simplest because it is keeping a trace of those board arrangements, those lists which we have got on our way to reach to the source board position to the target board position. So this is our algorithm. We have shown you that how my program is working and how to bring a betterment in our execution in our coding. In this video, we are going to show you that how the family relationship can be expressed in Prolog language. So here we are having one family tree. So these are the, so Pam is the parent of Bob, Tom is the parent of Bob, Tom is also having another child that is Lige. So this is our family relationship tree. Prolog is a programming language for symbolic, non-numeric, computation. It is specially well suited for solving problems that involve objects and relationships and between the objects and so on. So objects and relationships or relations between the objects will be depicted in our prolog language. In prolog we can write this family tree as like this one. So parent Pam Bob. So Pam is the parent of Bob. Parent Tom Bob. So Tom is the parent of Bob. Parent Tom Lige. So Tom is the parent of Liz and so on. So there we are having, this is known as the facts. That means the known knowledge base. So also known as knowledge base, also known as facts. So in this way we have written this. And this can also be under the category clause. And each and every clause must be terminated by a full stop. And that is the syntax of this prolog language. So our example program has helped to demonstrate some important points. So what are the points we have noted here? We have defined parent relation by stating the n tuples of objects based on the given info in the family tree. The user can easily query the prolog system about the relations defined in the program. So whatever the knowledge base we are having, we can generate the respective queries and goals to get the answers. A prolog program consists of clauses terminated by a full stop as I mentioned earlier. The arguments of relations can among other things be concrete objects or constants such as Pat or Jim or general objects 
such as x and y. So here this x and cap x is written in capital and y is also written in capital. So they are the general objects can also be called as variables. Objects of the first kind in our program are called atoms. So here we are having this Pat and Jim, they will be known as the atoms. And objects of the second kind will be known as the variables. So here this capital X and capital Y will be known as the variables. So variables can be written in prologue either starting with a capital letter or with one underscore. After that it may have smaller capital letter combinations, it can have underscore, it can have digits and so on. Questions to the system consists of the one of the one or more goals. So let us define the sex of our family members. These facts can be written in two different ways. You can write in this way or you can write in this way. So that will depend upon your decision that how to define the sex of the family members using facts written in two different types of clauses. You can select any one of them. So let us let us see how can we define mother and sister relationships. So how to define the mother relationship? X will be the mother of Y if X is parent of Y along with X is female. So how to write this one in prologue clauses? We can write in this way. X will be the mother of Y. Here X and Y are written in capital letters. That means they are the variables. So X and Y, X will be the mother of Y if parent X, Y and female x. So if two clauses are satisfied at the same time because here we are having this comma, comma denotes end logic. So on the other hand semicolon denotes or. So here these two conditions are connected by and and this is known as if colon dash is known as if and each and every prologue clause must be terminated by full stop. We know that clauses can be divided into two categories. One is a facts, another one is a rule. So this is our rule and where we wrote something like your parent Tom Pat, so that was our fact, that is a knowledge base. So sister, how to define sister? So come to this diagram here. So X will be the sister of Y. If X and Y, if they are having the same parent, let it be Z, also in the capital letters, variable and X is female. For Y, I need not to mention the respective sex for Y. So how to write this one in prologue clauses? So sister XY, if parent ZX and parent ZY, that means Z is the common parent for X and Y both and female X. Last one, and X is not equal to Y. So if X is not equal to Y, X is a female and X and Y both are having the same parent let it be Z say then you can say that X is a sister of Y. Similarly you can define the father you can easily see that here we had the female here we have written male and similarly we can also go for has child. So X will have the child if X is parent of someone. So someone how to write someone in prologue that is underscore underscore means what? means anonymous variable. So a variable can be underscored and it is having a special meaning that it is anonymous variable. So brother xy, so we have defined sister, now brother xy, so parent xz, parent zx rather and parent zy, so that means the same parent for x and y and male x and x is not equal to y. So in this way also you can define brother relation. So here we have defined our parent our sex relation, then mother, sister, father, has child, brother and so on. So let us go for the practical demonstration for the better understanding how these codes should be written and how to execute them through certain queries or goals. So here is the demonstration for you. This is a sample prologue program. A prologue program will have mainly three sections. One is the domains, next one is the predicates and the last one is the clauses. So under domains we will be having name is equal to symbol or some sort of declarations like this. But symbol indicates that it is of the type text or string. And name 
this is my keyword my word i've given we can use some other um, names here also no issues so predicates under the predicates we shall be declaring all the predicates under which the clauses will be defined so here we are having this parent so pam and pop so we have written this one like this parent name common name female name and so on in under the clauses sections we shall discuss or we shall define our databases so this is our pam who is female and liz pat and all of them are female so here i am declaring some other knowledge base and this is the respective knowledge base we have defined now this is the clause and this is the the first clause we have written here is known as the mother so mother x comma y so you see under clauses we are writing such these are known as the rules these are known as the rules and this clauses will be known as the facts okay so facts and rules will be the members of the respective clauses so mother x comma y this symbol indicates if and this comma indicates and and full stop or period will be indicating the terminating of the respective clauses okay now so mother x comma y if parent x comma y comma means and female x in this way we have defined father has child means x will have a child if if parent x comma underscore here underscore underscore indicates that it is anonymous variable sister x comma y if parent z comma x parent z comma y that means if z is the common parent for x and y and if female x then and x is not equal to y then we shall say that sister x y is working in other versions of prolog instead of having this operator we can also use the operator like this one in other versions of prolog but in case of g a new prolog we will be going for this operator so similarly we have defined this brother parent zx parent zy and mel x and mel and x is not equal to y so in this way we have defined the respective facts these are the facts and these are the rules under the section clauses but in case of g any prolog these clauses predicates and domains these sections are not required so that's why we are putting them under block comment so in case of prolog we can write comments in two different ways in case of single line comment it can be preceded by the percent symbol in case of block comment it should be it should be enclosing the total block under slash star and star slash in this way okay so we are having this female male parent mother father has child sister and brother in this way so now let us go for the respective execution here we have already done the change directory so under this particular folder that is prolog workspace under this particular folder prolog workspace we have saved this file that is log2.pl so now the program has been compiled and it has been it has found that no error is there so it is executable now so now let me execute with some respective calls so i'm going for we know that in case of variables the variable name must be starting with some capital letters so now if i want to have any other options pending then i can give semicolon there and here we are getting two one is pat and the one is a peter let me check so jim so pat jim jim so it is peter jim so that's why you got two answers now let me go for mother if i want to terminate the solution here then i can press enter i can hit enter but if i want to get all other combinations then i shall i can press here uh, semicolon so these are the options so two answers i'm going to get from our knowledge base
So these, these are the answers are there. In this way, I can get it. If I go on pressing this semicolon, then all the answers will be obtained. Okay, let us go for blogger. So in this way, the program can be executed. The goal can be written. So these are known as the goals. So here, these are the respective answers I'm getting from this database. So this is a program we have written in Prolog. And here, in other versions, we may be having these domains, predicates, and clauses. But in case of GNU Prolog, we may start our program writing, keeping them under comment block. That means they are not going to be executed. We are going to discuss a very important topic that is the data objects in Prolog. So what are the different categories of data objects that are allowed in the Prolog? We shall discuss that one with some examples. So this is the respective uh, tree structure to show you that what is the categories are there and which is the subcategories. So data objects mainly can be divided into two parts. One is your simple objects. Another one is your structure. Structure means against one functor, we shall have multiple arguments. So structures will have multiple arguments. Let us suppose there is a particular structure with the name date and it is having three values, say 20 June 2017. So that is a structure. We shall have a separate video on structure, you can also watch them. So simple objects can be categorized into two heads. So here these are the constants and these are the variables. So what is the variable? The variable is nothing but a symbol which can hold multiple values but one value at a time obviously. So in this case of variables we can have say lowercase letters, we can have the capital letters, we can have the digits, we can have the underscore. So a variable name can start with some capital letters. A variable name can be starting with some underscore. So all these things we are discussing in that video where we are discussing only the variables. These constants can be divided into two categories. One is atoms and another one is the numbers. Say so T-O-M, Tom, written in the lowercase letters can be treated as an atom. And these numbers can be either integer or real. But real numbers are not so much used in our prologue codes. We may maximum we go for the integer number representations. So examples, let us go for the examples. So atoms, Tom, Pat, X100, X underscore 45 will be a good example of atoms. Numbers 100, 1235, 2000.45, these are real numbers, these are the integer numbers. Variables, so it can start with the capital letters, it can have the lowercase letters also, can have also the digits can also start with some underscore and then followed by some other characters. Structures, say day, so 9 June 2017, so that this is known as the structure name, also known as a functor, point 10, 25, a point is a functor, 10 and 25 are two arguments. So these are the representations of structures. So we are having separate videos for all them, for all of them, for the better understanding and for more examples and discussions, please watch all of them in the respective sequence. Thanks for watching this video.